Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to another MediaTek Labs Linkit tutorial. For more tutorials, technical resources and a very active forum, please register yourself on labs.mediatek.com. In this video, we will show you how to create a smart light based on the Linkit Connect 7681 hardware development kit. So what do we need for this tutorial? First, we need a Linkit Connect 7681 hardware development kit. We also need a RGB LED and a breadboard where we can connect all these things together. So in the end, we will connect the GPIOs on the Linkit Connect to the LEDs and the connect board is connected to the computer through the micro USB cable only for, as a power supply and to flash the new firmware. So, firstly we will have to create a virtual device in the MediaTek Cloud Sandbox because the nice thing about the Linkit Connect 7681 is that it supports the MediaTek Cloud Sandbox out of the box, which means we can control the board through the MediaTek Cloud Sandbox. How are we going to do that? First, we create a device, a virtual device, on the MediaTek Cloud Sandbox portal. So we go to mcs.mediatek.com, log in with your Labs account, and then go to Development. On the development, we will create a new prototype device, so our virtual device. We give it a name, like Smart Light. We choose a prototype version, 1.0, and we have to specify the hardware platform, which is very important. So we choose the Linkit Connect 7681. Industry, we will choose others and application is other as well. So that's that. The virtual device is now created. So let's go and configure it. We press details and we enter the configuration tool. So here we can specify data channels. And in this example, we want to control the GPIOs. So as I said before, the board supports the MediaTek Cloud Sandbox out of the box. So when we add a data channel, we choose a controller because we want to control the board. And we also say it is a GPIO because we want to control GPIOs on the board. So we give it a name. We choose red because this is one of the colors we can uh, switch the LED to. And the Data channel ID, this is now very important, has to be GPIO underscore zero zero, which means we will then be able to directly control the GPIO zero on the board. We also have to select GPIO as a data type, which then gives us a preview of how it will look like. So we save that and we will repeat it for another channel. So we add another controller. We call this green because this will control the green light of the LED. And the data channel ID will be GPIO01. And again, we specify the data type as GPIO. We save it. And so now we finished creating our prototype. So in this example, we will control one RGB LED like with, with these two data channels and we can set it then to high or to low and change the color of the LED like so. Right, so this is it from the MediaTek Cloud Sandbox side. So now we have to flash the firmware so to make sure that the board has the latest firmware installed. We have a, a very detailed a video tutorial on how to flash the firmware so I recommend you to watch that because I go through these steps fairly quickly now. We can find the firmware uh, on the resources mobile application and on that website you will find a link to 
the 7681 firmware. And there's a link to the file. So we download the MT7681 SDA header.bin. We go to our downloads and we copy that file into our uh, uh, projects folder and we open a command line tool to then be able to upload the firmware to the board. So I'm already now in the right folder with the upload uploading tool. So we call MT7681 uploader. We specify the file with minus F and then the full path to the file, which is link it connect projects. And then is the MCS. That's where I copied the file just now. And then is the header bin. And we have to specify the COM port. We can find the correct COM port by going to the device manager and we will find it on the ports. So that's the port 36. So we can close that and can specify port COM port 36. Now the firmware is flashed through the micro USB cable. Um, this takes a few seconds and once we flash the firmware, we then can configure the board to connect to a local Wi-Fi network. We can do that really easily because the board supports the smart connection library, which makes it easy to get the Wi-Fi information onto the board. So as we can see, the firmware is flashed to the board, so we can now set the correct uh, Wi-Fi information. To do that, we use the MediaTek Cloud Sandbox app for Android. You can find it in the Google Play Store. And so we start it, we log in with the same account we used to create the device. And then we press on this plus button at the bottom right. Uh, and we press again, smart connection. This then broadcasts the Wi-Fi information to the board, the board will pick it up and connect itself to the same Wi-Fi. This is now already pre-populated with the correct SSID and password because this mobile phone is already connected to that network. So all we have to do is to press start. So now we start broadcasting the SSID and the password. The board is looking for this kind of information, will find it and connect itself automatically to the Wi-Fi. Once we've done that, we can refresh and the device will appear as in this list here. So we will see the MAC address and the allocated IP address as well. Now we have to get this board connected to our prototype we just con cr created on the Cloud Sandbox portal. It's very easy to do that. We just press the plus button and then it will give us a selection of these prototypes. So we only have one, this is the smart light. So we choose the smart light and we click next. Now we have to give it a name. So we can do something like smart light again. Smart light and we dismiss the keyboard and press save. And that's it. So the app now connected this physical device to our virtual prototype we just created. And now it's ready to control through the app or through the portal. So we again, we choose the app. And here we see we have these two controllers, one for the red and one for the green channel. In our actual device here, we have two LEDs, but for this demonstration, we just control one of the LEDs. So we can switch now both channels to low, which should turn the light completely off. We then can switch the red one to high, which will activate the red channel. So it will be red. We switch it off and we switch the green channel on. So it will be green. And if we switch both on, it will be kind of yellowy because of the mix of the two colors. 
So this is how you create a smart light based on the Linkit Connect 7681. If you're interested in more video tutorials like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to head over to labs.mediatech.com for more technical resources and our very active developer forum. Thanks for watching.